In the previous section, we looked at how the ICT industry minimizes the emissions caused by data transmission. We'll now look at how the industry improves the environmental performance of data centers. More and more data centers are being built around the world. One reason is that as we create more and more data, needs for storage increase. Another reason is cloud computing. With the low latency of 5G and optical networks, data is increasingly processed remotely in the cloud. Obviously, data centers consume electricity. And if that power is from the grid, it usually means carbon emissions. Large ICT companies are among the biggest users of green power. In 2019, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon were the four biggest buyers worldwide. Huawei is part of this effort. In the Western Chinese province of Qinghai, it built the country's first data center entirely powered by renewables. A massive solar farm operates nearby. To run smoothly, the optimal indoor temperature for data centers is between 18 and 27 degrees. In this range, key components are neither too cold nor too hot. Heat is normally the problem. Data storage and processing generates a lot of heat and requires cooling. Most facilities are currently cooled by a combination of air conditioning, chilled water systems, and DX cooling, a cooling method used in refrigerators and freezers. Altogether, cooling accounts for over half of the energy consumed by data centers. When possible, data center operators aim to locate their facilities where they can harness natural cooling. Colder countries tend to attract much data center investment. Cool lake or seaside locations are also attractive. Some companies, Microsoft for example, have even tested the operation of data centers at depths of over 30 meters on the seabed. The equipment is placed inside pressure-resistant steel casings the size of shipping containers. When data centers have to be set up in hot climates, the focus turns to raising the efficiency of cooling systems. This is a very complex job traditionally performed by highly trained technicians. Recently, however, AI has been harnessed to support their work. The AI constantly analyzes reams of operational data and automatically implements the most efficient cooling method whether it's air conditioning, natural cooling, or liquid cooling. Talking of liquid cooling, it's a relatively new way to cool data center components. It involves setting up tubes filled with liquid coolants directly onto the circuit boards and into the doors of the housing cabinets. Server chips are one of the main sources of heat in data centers. Using liquid cooling, it's possible to remove heat much closer to the source, the chips, and that's far more energy efficient than air conditioning. Liquid cooling is an example of the constant innovations being implemented at data centers. Recently, a new industry trend has emerged to prefabricate data centers instead of building them on site. By prefabricating, it's possible to achieve things like reducing the number of heat exchangers required. This significantly lowers energy requirements. A lot of research is currently going into the development of new computing methods that would make cloud computing more energy efficient. And obviously, much research is also underway to develop power supplies that consume less energy. Meanwhile, basic R&D is taking place to discover ways to store data differently. One approach is to use DNA. Animal and human DNA can store an extremely large amount of biological data, and it appears that it could be used to store digital data as well. It might be some time before DNA storage becomes a reality. One thing that's for sure, though, is that data centers will keep on improving their energy performance. And that's it for this chapter on managing the environmental footprint of data centers. In the next and last part of this course, we'll look at what living with a smart grid will feel like.